Hi everybody, this is Professor Miletta and this is the Miletta lab. In my lab we study jellyfish and uh, um, you all are familiar with jellyfish but they are very important component of the marine ecosystem. Um, they can form blooms and those blooms can be massive. They can cover huge areas um, and they're problematic because they can sting people. Um, we don't like to swim uh, when there are jellyfish around. But they can also clog nets. Um, they can, they, they're predators, so they feed on larvae, on fish larvae, and they compete with the commercial important um, fish. Um, the jellyfish are produced by tiny polyps that live at the bottom of the ocean. And so in my lab, we have those polyps in the lab, and we try to understand um, the conditions that trigger uh, the formation of the jellyfish. There are a lot of people studying the big jellyfish, but really the number of the jellyfish that you see in the environment really depends on, on those tiny polyps that form them um, and, what, and the triggers that actually uh, induce the polyps to form the jellyfish. In the lab, we also study immortal jellyfish. Uh, the scientific name is Turidopsis dogwani, and this is a very special and unique animal. It's a tiny jellyfish, very few millimeters in length, uh, and when you try to kill it, you starve it, you cut it, you change the salinity, you add chemicals to the water, it doesn't die. It forms a bulk of cells and it rejuvenates itself, and it um, metamorphoses back into a polyp. Okay. And the polyp then grows, forms a colony of polyps, and then those polyps can produce hundreds of new beetles. So we call it immortal jellyfish because technically it doesn't die, it rejuvenates itself into the polyp. And so what we're doing is studying the genes, um, and we're trying to understand the genetics and the genome of this animal, and we're trying to understand how it is possible that this tiny jellyfish uh, doesn't die and rejuvenate itself. In the next few videos you're going to see my students and they're going to tell you more about the specific uh, research that they're carrying out in the lab and so I hope you will enjoy it. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Frilova. I just finished up my fourth year in the Miglietta lab as a PhD student. I study jellyfish blooms, specifically I study jellyfish belonging to the class Cyphozoa. So those are gonna be your, uh, what are sometimes called true jellyfish. They're the big jellyfish that you, that you see. And in Galveston Bay and in the Gulf of Mexico, in this area, uh, some cyphozoans you might see are gonna be moon jellies, the bay nettles, or the cabbage heads. So in the beginning of my PhD, I went out into the field a lot. I went out on boats, I went out collecting on the beach, I went on research cruises, um, I did a lot of work in the field, but now most of my work is actually done behind the computer. So what I'm doing now is I'm analyzing the data that I've collected over the past few years, and I'm also writing up my findings and I'm writing my dissertation. So let me show you my screen. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what I do on a daily basis. So. Right now, like I said, I'm just looking at uh, data and what I'm working on specifically is making maps. So this is what my computers look like and I usually use two screens and right now I've just com completed a draft of this map that uh, shows the distribution of a new species of moon jellyfish that we discovered here um, in the Miglietta lab. So that's what I'm working on. Um, and like I said, if I'm not um, analyzing data or creating visuals right now, um, I'm, I, then I'm, I'm writing, which I also do on the computer. I'm Cade, and I'm one of the graduate students working in Dr. Miglietta's lab. In my work, I'm looking at the developmental trajectory of the Cassiopeia jellyfish, also known as the upside down jellyfish all the way from polyp through the ephyra stage as it develops into an adult. This jellyfish is special because unlike most, it contains photosynthetic symbionts and sits on the bottom of Florida's mangroves. Part of this development is understanding how 
those symbionts develop and when, in the life cycle, they start to gain prominence. In these few short weeks that you're observing over the course of these pictures, the oral arms of these jellyfish develop significantly and the number of symbionts multiply from very few to thousands. Sequences like these will help to analyze how a polyp like this ends up at these giant adult jellyfish that sit on the bottom and produce all of their energy through photosynthesis. Have fun and stay curious.